the network. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Music News That Matters. We're on the first of every month. We help you sift through the noise to bring you the most important industry news. We know there's so much information out there, but we're going to focus on topics that are most relevant to you guys. And as always, we'll give you our perspective as well. Today, we're going to be chatting about Spotify, testing several new features, some good and some bad. And we're also going to discuss the value and importance of sync in the music industry. And of course, before we get started, since these videos are only once a month, make sure you sign up to our newsletter to get notified of the latest news and why it matters between episodes. And don't forget we're on Oh, that's your part. <laughs> I'll keep going though. Go We're on Spotify, it. right? You We're can also Spotify. listen, yeah, on on to the podcast on Spotify, Apple Music, SoundCloud, and all of the good things. Thanks to Josh. Let's get it, everybody. Sweet. So we're going to start off, Sean, with Spotify. And uh, the first thing I want to talk about is the uh, the fact that they've removed the um, listener count from the discovered on playlist on desktop, which I think is a uh, very disappointing. Thing to close out yeah th there's so many interesting arguments i hear about this what what is your perspective so like, from one perspective i can understand you know it was you know it's supposed to be like no one really use it so much maybe because obviously it's not on mobile but and also they're thinking it's probably going to stop like the the fake playlist so much but i actually think that by taking away this you lose transparency so if I'm looking at, if I'm trying to picture a playlist, a smaller playlist, and I can see smaller artists, I know that that playlist is probably going to come up on their profile. And if, and if the amount of listeners is not correlating to the actual number of followers, then I know it's not a good playlist. But I won't have that option anymore to check. Right. And that's the interesting thing, man, because it's all about who are you trying to serve at the end of the day. Mm. All right. We can say, hey, this platform is for consumers. It's not necessarily for artists in that way we use artists to serve consumers but it's not necessarily for artists so it does make things interesting right because you want to please artists to the extent that you can serve them to the consumers but at the end of the day it they they try to this is one of those politic things where you use an argument that sounds like you're doing good really mm -hmm. to also take more control over the platform and eliminate some of your competition because these third party playlists are yeah. a real thing, right? They're useful, but you take away some of the utility at, for the artist, like you said, like it makes it a lot harder to understand how do I take advantage of, of this playlist? Which ones do I want to get on? And I know they say that it's, it helps more so with uh, making sure that people are focused on the quality of playlists and, and you know, not gaming numbers and things of that nature, but really, it just makes it. I I, I don't really find a, a, a world where it's actually better for anybody. No, it's annoying because obviously it doesn't make any difference at all to bigger eyes because obviously numbers are going to be big. But for independent artists and smaller artists, it's a big difference, especially as a lot of artists were tweeting out that it's um it was a really valuable free marketing tool, and there aren't many of those around that are actually free and accessible to everyone. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and to me though, at the end of the day, like I wouldn't overthink it because, look, if you see, if you can still see the type of playlist that certain artists on on, so you can still reach out to a playlist of an artist yeah. that you're listening to and things like that's one route, right? If I'm if I'm listening to artists I, or I go to similar artists, I can see what playlist their music has been picked up on. So I'll just go reach out to those playlists. It makes sense, you know. You can tell still if it's owned by Spotify or not. So mm -hmm. there's still that path of kind of understanding the quality of a playlist, which is more how you want to be looking at playlists anyway. Like there's still paths to get there. And then you can utilize other sites like Chartmetric uh, yeah. to, I mean, if you're paying for, you know, the professional premium account to start to get a feel of which of these, you, you pretty much see the exact same stats. So everything that spot of five is taking and more on chart metric so that's still there you just have to get some more money exactly the important things for this are that usually you'd go on the desktop on spotify and you go on the artist profile and you would see the five top players they're on you'll no longer be able to see the listeners count you still be able to see the playlist and also this doesn't impact spotify for artists at all you'll be able to see all the players you're on yourself on your own account it doesn't affect that you'll be able to see what players you're on and how many listeners are listening to your music it's just on the front end for you know the general consumer general user you can't access it 
Yeah. I mean, in, in that vein, I might actually flip. I mean, I, I could at least understand in that instance. Because if they're trying to say that they don't want people to follow a playlist based off of social proof, they want people to follow a playlist based off of whether they like the playlist. Is that mm -hmm. what they're trying to say? Well, maybe, but that doesn't, doesn't go far enough because to do that, they would remove the followers count from the playlists altogether, wouldn't they, if they're going to do that? Well, you're saying the consumer wouldn't see the playlist though, right? Well, they'll have to see the playlist. They just can't see the, the number of listeners it's got on well, those top well, five playlists. Well, that's what I'm saying. They, they won't see the five. But your, your argument is that it wouldn't just be that the consumers can't see the follower account. You, you think that if they really care, they wouldn't let anybody see the follower account? Yeah, I think so. Because obviously, they, but obviously you can, everyone can see at the moment. They can see the number of followers the playlist has got. But what you want to know is how many people are actually listening to that playlist. And removing this takes that away to some extent. It's just yeah. it's the, it's the listeners that are more important than the followers. Are they yeah. actively engaged? I don't... I actually I disagree with that because I think that as a consumer, yeah, they should be focused on whether they... Like, or whether they like a playlist or not. Nothing more than yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. So, but on the back end, there is still utility. If I have a playlist, I'm going to be able to know how many people are following my playlist because I can judge other metrics. There's a lot of reasons for me to understand that. So, I wouldn't say... I don't know. Like just like anything, right? There's a lot of websites that don't allow you having to have an insight on the front end because it's not too many user experience that allows you to see a lot more deeper into it on the back end because there's all these functions to it. So yeah, the other point I made, the other point I made on the newsletter was that ultimately this was just on desktop. It wasn't on mobile apps, which is the main way that Spotify is used anyway. Therefore, will it make much of a difference? I mean, now that part, yeah. Now that part brings things into question like what are you doing or, or why are you going if you yeah you know, why are you going about it this way because as you said it's used mostly on mobile so what's the point of just doing it on one or not or not the other i guess we have to wait to see for, for this one but if this is just a sign of things to come we're always going to find a different way around to yeah. do whatever we need to do the next up from Spotify, lots of new features. Um, one of them is they're launching these new songwriter pages, which is an expansion on the liner notes for song credits. So, for example, you know, if you go in song credits on songs, you'll be able to see, you know, who's, who's contributed to the music. And you can now click on the songwriter and they get their own sort of like Spotify artist page. And the sort of things you can see on here, you can see a picture of them, all the tracks they've written and appeared on, their most frequent collaborators, a link to their website and social media. And also they have their own playlist generated by Spotify called Written By and then X Songwriter. So, you know, it's nice to see Spotify giving some more recognition to songwriters. But my biggest point about this is that I'm now going to read out how you access this profile page. So what you need to do is right click on the track or if you're on mobile, tap the dot, dot, dot next to the track. You then need to go down and find song credits. You then need to hit that then you need to hit the songwriter's name, then you'll find the songwriter's profile page. But in this day and age, we, we're doing a lot of you know, passive listening or having our phone unlocked or using an app. I really give me that actively engaged in Spotify to go all, all through that process to find a songwriter's page. Probably not. Probably not at all. I mean, there's those people who actually really care about those, that yeah. stuff, right? They will get a lot of benefit from this, but of course we know that's a percent of the percent um, mm -hmm. type situation. I, I, I mean, I, yeah, this is just a, an additional feature. It's a nice to have, I guess, but there's no legitimate impact to the platform that this makes. Um, in my opinion, I don't mm. know who vouched, vouched for this or well, no, I think it's a good thing. It should be done. Yeah. So it's, it's a, it's a, more, more yeah, yeah. I take that back. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like I said, it's a nice to have, but it, there's so many other issues that are, are important in terms of innovating the platform. This is just adding another feature as opposed to in, uh, improving the actual experience and innovating on a platform again, which obviously I've kind of posted gripe about that before. So well, what they should have is that they should be the same. They should have their own artist page. You can just search them straight from, you know, where you search for music, you can search for the songwriter, not just an artist and they have their own complete page profile page 
and also that's a great uh, idea and also where you know where you've got this says you know it says music and it says like um songs artists and albums songwriters yeah. have their own tab as well i feel so you can follow certain songwriters if you like a lot of their work there just needs to be more done this is a good first step there just needs to be a lot more features to make it more accessible for people to actually find these songwriters yeah now i agree if it goes that path then yeah if you're going to do this actually do it and treat them like artists as well in the mm. same way as anyway of their own tracks so essentially the pages can be pretty similar from a user experience um standpoint long term that uh, i'm kind of interested in that so yeah, more work to be done on that but it's a good step in the right direction a few other things from spotify you can now share your spotify canvases to your instagram story so we same way you'd share your album artwork of your song you can now share the canvas as well so if you've got that option it's a nice little feature and the other thing is they're also testing out real-time lyrics so underneath when the music's playing before you might have seen storyline but now that you scroll down you can actually see the lyrics that are populated in real time for some tracks so they're just testing these out rolling them out slowly you know seeing how they how they get on but um you know these are all just little things but it could make a, a better platform in the future now that I think is interesting because we talk so much about the passive listening that happens on Spotify. This is something mm. that might force people to engage and have their eyes and their ears at the same time, which is something that obviously they've been trying to figure out how to get for a period of time since they've been expanding with bringing video on the platform for the last couple of years. And this also that goes back cool. to our point about uh, Reza a few episodes ago, where they're going to have like memes and discussions in the actual songs rolling as they play. And that'll be a great way to get people to actually stay on the platform and keep their app open and the, and the screen on. Mm -hmm. So Spotify can start doing more of that, then we're gonna get more engaged listening. All right, because we know people care about lyrics, right? Lyric videos are popping on YouTube for mm -hmm. a reason. All right, we know people wanna get lyrics and it seems that it's a better experience to hear and see lyrics at the same time, right? Your karaoke-like experience. And that's another thing actually, People can now use Spotify for karaoke, um, yeah. right? Like that, that, that's, that as well. So you're actually kind of inching into another market inadvertently. So that could be really dumb. But I'm, I would actually, not going to lie. So yeah. When it, how, do you know when they, is this like a beta test? Yeah, it's just beta test. Or yeah. Is that, yeah. Yeah, well, but also the other thing is you have to scroll down to find this stuff. So you only have the canvas or the artwork. I mean, if you scroll down to find the storyline or the lyrics, like it probably should be a bit more prominent, maybe like a swipe. But I don't, the idea of like having to scroll down to find it should just come up on the screen maybe. I think it's just the user experience isn't quite there yet with it. Right. If I had to bet long term, it would start to get more and more prominent on real mm. estate, as you said. It will take some time probably, but that should definitely stay. Yeah. And the final thing from Spotify is um, not anymore. We've gone, we've gone through the news and the, and the features they're implementing, but I actually was reading an interesting opinion piece by a guy called Michael Donaldson, who's the founder of H Dimension Records. And he has said, is the title of the headline is why a tip jar on Spotify is a bad idea. So this caught my interest because we've been talking about tipping a lot and how it's you know, working well on Loom and why Spotify should potentially do it to help our eyes. But he makes a very strong argument for why this wouldn't work. Have you, got any, have you got any thoughts before we go into it? Like immediately, like, do you think it's a bad idea on the face of it? Yeah, I mean, a lot of my, my thoughts honestly were around his, but yeah, tip, tip, like, you know, you think that tip jars at, at first, it sounds good. Oh, more revenue for money, but it just doesn't work like that when it comes to the way it's set up for most artists, right? There, mm -hmm. There's the good and the bad. For the independent artists, yes, it could be a very good thing, but for the signed artists, there's a little bit of uh mirrors because you're not tipping the artists themselves right like this yeah. is you're tipping and that artist won't see the tip for probably like two quarters from when you actually give them that 50 cents or five dollars and then that five dollars is actually going to be what is it 30 cent that spotify was going to take which is cool all right take yeah. your transaction fee or maybe or well that's it, it was 30 uh, percent that's way more than a regular transaction fee. Actually. I know, yeah, yeah. Jeez. It's not confirmed, uh, yeah. I don't think. I don't think the yeah. fee's confirmed, but it probably will be around that ballpark. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. that's actually ridiculous now that I think about it, that it's that much. 
uh, particularly when they're already doing what they're what they're doing. For, YouTube for is worse. Right. We're going to come on to that later, but YouTube is a lot worse. Yeah, this new know. this new feature. Yeah, <laughs> YouTube's payouts have never been as good as anybody else's. So I'm not. We'll, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but but um. So you, one, yeah, you're gonna split with Spotify. It's just like how it's going now, right? You take a stream, yep. and who does that money go to? Goes towards some towards Spotify, uh, in, in in some form of fashion. But then, even more importantly, the breakdown of the the major label, indie label manager, like all those relationships. The artist only sees a percent of a percent. So in terms of if I'm a fan and I want to tip an artist. And the reason I'm an intent I have by tipping that artist is far better for me to do either on a better platform like their TikTok page, Patreon, or, or Loom, or Patreon, right? Because mm -hmm. um, TikTok takes what fifty percent, so yeah. like that, or just some other individual platform, or maybe just buy some daggone merch or something. But yeah, that doesn't. It, it's 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 yeah, it sounds good because everybody's moving towards it, but it just doesn't have the same need that gets met when it comes to spotify i think they're better off not i don't want to say they're better off not doing it um because they are good they are looking at doing it daniel yeah. has said they are interested um, there's still been, indie yeah. artists that can benefit from it though right mm. yeah so it'll be beneficial from the indie artist standpoint i think because yeah you're paying spotify a 30 percent cut yeah you could say it's better to do on the other on other platforms but it's still using behavior if i'm on spot i might like loom i might not like tiktok i might not want to go to your patreon right so yeah. i'm already here and even though it's seven dollars instead of ten dollars or seven dollars versus nine dollars it's still seven dollars that you might not have captured so i think they should have it but <laughs> there's gonna have to be some kind of fan education piece that happens or maybe they uh, i was gonna i was actually gonna say maybe they provide a breakdown of where the splits go for the artists right but yeah. then that would be revealing some stuff about artist deals that <laughs> a lot of people wouldn't went out there like oh you're oh uh, i don't know said artist only gets two percent of the money you spend so i don't you serve the indie well and the major artists well depending or well signed artists well and navigate all that at once that's a it's a tricky yeah. it's a tricky one well, I'll go through his arguments and make a few comments. So the first one is that the only way it would work if the payment goes directly to the artist, which we already mentioned, because a label distributor could be like a conduit, but that won't eliminate the go-between. You want to cut out the middleman in a way. So, but who's going to be accountable if it's just going to be the artist? Because a lot of, you know, artists, you know, they don't, they're not responsible for running their own Spotify account. Obviously for mm. the indie artists, it works <laughs> really well, but obviously the labels are going to want to get a piece of the pie in these royalties. So therefore... That doesn't it seems like a broken system already before it's even begun. Um, he said the concept wouldn't work unless Spotify came on board. And what's their incentive? What's their motive for doing it? Because it obviously takes money away from them. They can take a cut of it, but is there, there is it really the, the amount of money it would cost to put the infrastructure in place and the time for testing it and stuff? Would it really be worth it ultimately? Mm. Yeah, I think that. Um... Spot. I don't. I don't think it'll be that. Well, okay. To the labels and even the idea of streaming, right? Spotify shouldn't be using this as a substitute for their streaming, right? Mm -hmm. We shouldn't say, "Hey, well, we're 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 lowering our streaming fees at some point." I mean, streaming payouts at some point. But hey, look, we are we're allowing you to do this direct to direct. Um, relationships especially when we're getting 30 percent of that right off the top right so yeah. these things should continue to be separate for one and then i don't understand how you keep the labels out of it in in certain artist situations because the way some of these contracts are set up whether it's the label or the manager or whoever yeah it, it's hard to cut out the middleman that's that's just the reality of a lot of contracts i mean again when we're talking about a sign artist situation you could call it a patreon if you want to the way some of these contracts are set up, they can take some of the money out of that Patreon account yeah, exactly. as well. So yeah. yeah, it's that that situation is fishy. So judge too completely off of that scenario. I I can only say it would be a positive for an independent artists. So more than anything, hey artists who aren't independent, 
all right? Consider being independent or consider staying independent because a lot of the benefits that are coming through these technologies are building a, a better world tomorrow for independent artists. And there's so many of those technologies and opportunities coming. You just have to be positioned to succeed as an ind independent artist in that, that um, climate. Right now, a lot of artists, either they aren't positioned because they're not handling their self, you know, understanding their marketing, all those types of situations, or there's other people who, you know, they have the fan base and they have everything except for freedom, all right? And they also won't be able to benefit as well. It'll be like that kid who's watching all the other kids play outside, but they're in time out. Mm. The other thing it says on here, some other very fair arguments, and um, the point he makes is about um, by claiming that, in a way, this sort of indicates that because Spotify's royalties are so low, it kind of suggests that, you know, artists should live off tips, which is obviously a, a big problem in the States, particularly like, the ethical problems with that. Like, should they really be, you know, having to rely on that for income, especially at an independent level? So it's a bad precedent. Artists should live off of tips. Oh, not at all. Exactly. Like no, that's, that, and that's what's encouraging, yeah, he reckons, yeah. in a way. That's, that's why I said those have to stay completely separate. Those are mm. two completely things. Because there's a lot of artists that don't have the fan base psychograph, right? So you, their money, they're better off getting streams than any kind of tips from their fans because their yeah. fans just aren't going to give that kind of money or they don't have that kind of money. Most of my fans are you know maybe 15 year olds in a underserved environment right it doesn't make sense for most people so well not most people it doesn't make sense for a lot of people and we can't put the blanket over every artist situation there's too many different types of fan bases styles of music and things of that nature something like well there's a few genres that are better that could perform well and artists that i definitely think can perform well but that's a whole nother conversation this is this is the danger we've been talking about before like why is the tipping culture in the west not been so prominent on you know on social media and on these music streaming platforms that's where it is so elsewhere it, but the problem is that, if we thoughts start, on that well if we start going down that rabbit hole of you know increasing these tips the companies are going to start thinking well actually they're making money a lot of artists are making money from this therefore we should you know do, let's save some money here and not pay out as much Money this elsewhere. is exactly how people like this already exists. Yeah. I know a lot of cultures don't necessarily have like the tipping culture, right? But in America, right, where the tipping culture is is is, is um, it's a tr it's a real thing. There's the waiters who get paid off of tips. Mm -hmm. They get paid pretty much no money. All right, it's like, hey, we're not really paying you that much hourly. We might pay you two dollars and thirty cents an hour because you should be getting a lot of money off of tips, and you got to make all that up there. And then, obviously, there's other jobs that, hey, it's not tips, so we'll pay you more, and you have this consistent thing, and you don't have to worry about these ebbs and flows of business and the timing. It, it that's definitely going to be the thought process of a lot of people. Yeah, said or unsaid is going to happen. There's a classic case where you know the top one percent or ten percent is making a lot of money, so they're thinking, "Oh, these guys are making loads. Everyone's making loads." But it's not the no. reality, and that's the way they think. Yeah. It's like the point is, tip, like this tip is for me to get more of what I deserve, not to mm -hmm. replace the little of what I deserve that you're already giving me. Right? Yeah. Is is not? Oh yeah. Okay. I'm not. If I'm not. If I'm barely getting what I deserve here, this is another stream of income to help me as an artist be able to live, get the value from my fan base that's already being messed with in so many ways and is difficult for me to connect with. I built this. This is more. This is not supposed to be a replacement for the issues that you already had. And now, hey, no, you're good now because you have that. Because you're only gonna mess that up. There's, there's always going to be a way, especially when I think of Spotify. There's just, it's so much label influence, right? It, it's, mm -hmm. it's going to be hard for them to do well, right? In terms of artist initiative, like things might look nice, right? It's just like why they have education platforms, but their educational videos aren't that really in depth. Right. You yeah, I mean? exactly. Yeah. Like they, yep. they aren't 
super practical and they're more they're glossy you know, sort of highlights like you know yeah yeah yeah. yeah 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 like it's that type of thing why because for one it's more of a same do good type thing versus a truly you know uh, what's the word i'm looking for I, they, they don't they don't there's no true measure of success or i don't believe all tent intent is really about caring and wanting the artist to succeed in that fashion if it is it's not done well at the moment could change and then on top of that when you are in bed with so many labels it just makes it difficult because now there's less incentive to even reveal certain types of information right and, and yeah. you have other artists a lot of times they're using artists to tell the information right and and a lot of times the artists start to tell you know teaching a class most of these artists especially in the more major label type game they don't want to give their secrets and some of them don't even honestly know so just an, an inspirational motivational glossy speech that they're giving yeah, my, my take from it is that it's no rather than getting actionable steps from it, it's more like I did this. Why can't you do it too? Or, or you can do it too. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 The other things, the other points he makes, which I think are very fair, is that um, this also doesn't help non artist songwriters at all because they're not going to get the tips. Mm. See, well, I didn't even think of it that way because that would be a part of the splits. I would assume. If it the tip goes that way, if the major label goes that um the major label gets their cut, the songwriter. But, but the idea is there's not gonna be this there's not gonna be this potential cut system if it's going straight to the artist. Like the idea is that it might yeah, they might not even this is where it gets dicey because what do you do and like how much time of Spotify gonna spend yeah. actually developing technology to split all this out and work out when needs to go what? Because metadata okay. is already broken anyway in, in the not well, actually, it makes sense that the songwriter doesn't get it because you would be essentially trying to tip the artist, not tip the song, unless they said, try to also create a feature where it's more so like the song that gets tipped on, that's, I, that, you know, gets, is the filter for how the revenue is split. So, yeah, it makes sense that the songwriter, one, wouldn't get it. And then from that standpoint, I don't think that's really that, that big of a deal. That's not a, a negative thing. That's what the songwriter signed up for, right? The songwriter mm. doesn't get, they don't get the merch. From the tour like they don't get that profit they don't get the, the, but, the ticket sales but they or will, anything they will suffer if the royalty payments go down but if this yes but again to yeah. me those things should stay separate in, in the first yeah. place yeah but if those things remain separate i don't care about the songwriter not getting the tip because they're tipping the artists that they've connected with in that fashion that's not necessarily tipping a song in that matter. Now, if the tips were some system that were based off of the music that's listening to right now, or I want to, like, if there, it was more like that, then you can have an songwriter's getting something. But if it's just, I'm, I'm tipping Beyonce, I don't care that she had 50 writers on the song. Yeah, I'm yeah. Tipping Beyonce, yeah. you know? Yeah. On the flip side, if I'm putting myself in Spotify shoes, one way this could be good is that if you add this tipping feature, increase the reliance on the platform for artists you have you you know you become you become a bit more of a significant player in the game if you if there are tips on that well that's what they're doing it now you asked me my thoughts actually that was my my very first thought the first time i i read this it was just the fact that all of these people are moving towards tipping in general and people mm -hmm. know they have to do it because the more money like there's like the two things money and attention like those are going to be the two greatest incentives is for people to use platforms, right? If I yeah. want to get my attention, build my fan base fast, and I want to be able to make money, and the more money that's on there, the more it's incentive for people to actually stay and use that platform. I'm like, oh, you want to spend time on TikTok, uh, TikTok when they have, and they don't have tipping, but also, but Instagram has tipping. Well, I'm going to be wait more over here. It's like, oh, or they have at least the benefit of getting a fan base fast. But yeah, like now it's going. To we're, we're going to get to a point where, of course, everybody is doing it in their own way because they realize that truth in that. Like, why would somebody use my platform if they're making 10 times the money and they already have attention? If they already have attention and they're making 10 times the money, it's just like why I would move from SoundCloud to Spotify when I'm not really getting paid like for any of these streams. You know, I know SoundCloud on their back end, they, they, they created a payout system, which isn't all that. Mm, um, yes, yeah, not yeah. But, you know, it, but like, yeah. Essentially, I would, I might get popping on SoundCloud for attention. But once mm -hmm. I have attention, 
why do I care to be here when I can make money? I'm now trying to monetize my attention. It's always the problems in that order. First, I need attention, then I need to monetize it. If I don't have a way to monetize, then why would people try to push people to my platform? Even if my shit stays on Spotify, I might say, hey, go check my stuff out on X, you know, like wherever that is, because that's where I know I'm going to make more money. So I'm going to try to push people there more often. Yeah, it certainly opened my eyes, this argument, because I was thinking before, you know, with TikTok doing so well and Loom getting involved, I was thinking, you know, this tipping's a great idea. It's an extra source of income. But so logistically, it's such a problem for Spotify to, to go into. It's just, it would just become very messy and potentially, you know, could have really bad consequences for everyone. So Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's a dicey thing. Again, when you have that many stakeholders, you know, at, at, at once, and when you're dealing with, just putting lipstick on the pig, as they say, right? Because mm-hmm. it's so, it became so ingrained in that old culture of industry versus pushing towards the new that it's hard to really fix that new old model incrementally or just by adding these new features or to good new projects. You really yeah. kind of do have to just be outside of it, <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. And then and to really benefit from these things. Uh, so that's, that's Spotify. That's all, you know, that's what they're doing at the moment. Lots of new features and lots of things then to think about. I thought we'd uh, move on to something a bit different now because we don't really, we haven't really talked about uh, sync a lot, uh, especially not on this podcast. Um, mm-hmm. I was reading an interesting article written by Chris Edward Thakra from Sync Tank. And uh, she said, you know, this, Netflix are going to put 17 billion into, you know, into their programs this year, into their, into their movies and the TV series. And it's going to have a, a massive effect on the opportunities for, you know, music to go into TV shows. And the same thing as well when we've got Disney Plus launching, Apple TV Plus has launched as well on HBO Max. There's a lot, suddenly a lot more opportunities for artists to get their music out there and get some money as well. And I think it's just an interesting time because there's not been this much, you know, opportunity for an extra source of income before. So I think it's just thinking from an indie artist perspective really might be worthwhile getting yourself signed up to put things like music gateway and stuff to get some sync coverage you know paying for someone to pitch you to these tv series and movies because the revenue it looks like it's going to be there yeah man this is a benefit and just a derivative of this content landscape that we're in it's not just artists that need more content it's not just even regular entertainment that needs more content it's brands in general mm-hmm. right the nba needs more content nfl the nl mlb the like the soccer leagues mcdonald's everybody mm-hmm. needs more content to stay top of mind and be included in the attention and the regular meme guy at home or just like the little kid in fifth grade they put might try to put your stuff on something and not pay Right. Like, of course, they're going to do it all the time. If anything, the technologies will find it copyrighted because of the things they're coming up with. And that'll be that. But it, but it's, there's no payment that's going to come out of it because that doesn't make sense for the consumer. But Coca-Cola that can get sued, right? McDonald's that can get sued. These bigger companies that still need to create more content, especially understanding that music is an integral part of consuming content so much in so many ways, right? They use it on the commercials and their TV shows and, and, and all these things before. And now that we need to create more and more of it, then there's gonna be more people that need sync, right? So it's just sim- yeah. simple as that, right? So, and those people who do it that way, again, all right, we have more people that are official, you know, carry their, their, their business out in the true proper legal fashions that means a lot more opportunities for artists. And there's so many artists that I believe that, well, this already happened. It's not even new, but I think so many more artists will truly understand that, hey, I could just become a sync artist and make more than a yeah, lot of these other yeah. artists. Like there, there's, there's a lot of bad music. I was, me and Corey were watching uh, TV last night and I was pointing out to him, like, listen to all these bad songs, especially reality TV shows. There's a mm-hmm. lot of bad music that plays in the background, but it does yeah. the job and it doesn't yeah. even feel that bad in that moment, right? Because that's not the full purpose of it. It's not the focus, yeah. yeah. Yeah, if you're a whack rapper, you can come up on, on sync deals, right? Like, you don't have to be 
commercial level record label sign um, level to pay to to win off of sync. All right, so there's there's so much opportunity. That's I guess I have so many thoughts because I haven't really, as you said, we haven't really went deep into um, sync too much on these videos. But I, of course, this is just it's a positive. All right, that they're investing in more content because that means more opportunity for sync. But I think that's also just indicative of the landscape of today. More content is, means more people need to create more content just to stay, yeah. um, you know, top of mind and compete for attention. And then the more people that need to do it and the more you force these official brands to do it, that's going to be more opportunity as well. Because, of course, they have to handle things legally because they have a lot of other assets to uh, protect. It got me thinking again, like, obviously, it makes, it makes so much sense, but, you know, a lot of artists could actually write particular songs with, you know, with a brand in mind or with a TV series in mind, say, they say like, the first season of a particular show. Maybe you could write something for the second season that you could try and pitch. I was thinking, obviously, what was the name of the artist you interviewed who, you know, pitched to Spanx? I've forgotten his name. Oh, my gosh. How did I forget his name? Because it's just, it's, yeah, I, had it, I had it in my brain. I just forgot because I was going to make the point. Oh, my God. It, it's, uh... Make make the point. Make the point. I will say his name. I don't know why his name is not popping up right now. You know, the um, idea that he, you know, he had this idea in mind. He was like, I'm going to write this song about Spanx. I'm going to do all my research into her brand and I'm going to pitch it to her. And it all mm -hmm. just came out from there and he made him a lot, a serious amount of money for a big brand. And he just, ha he just had the idea. It's like, rather than writing a song, obviously I'm, I'm all for artists, you know, writing songs because they want to write them and whether they want it to be about. But if you could write something with a particular brand or target in mind, could really be so fruitful for you so he set out just to make this song about Spanx and he got the deal and yep. you know, there's no reason why you still make your own on your own creative endeavors make your own projects but also maybe you know once in a while you should sit down and think right what would I like to let's write something I can actually particularly target to a particular brand or tv series or anything and just pitch it you know you never know what's going exactly happen. exactly 100 percent I guess it's there and I had another artist who saw that interview, mm -hmm. me talk, talking about that with him, and then they decided to pitch to a big car brand a song that they had about that car brand, yeah. and you know it's a more niche car brand or whatever. And I don't, I don't think it went anywhere, and I wasn't even going to advise the artist to, to do it exactly. Well, that was a lot of back end stuff because he needed to own the song, in my opinion. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. But. But with that being said, he was it actually engaged, got response from one of the bigger people of the brand, um, some big BP or whatever, which took it and continued to have conversations. So the pitch actually went through, right? He actually got to somebody yeah. with a chance, yeah. enough interest where there's, hey, I'm going to present this idea to the team, right? And see what happens. And that just goes to show you, it's so much harder to get an executive's attention in music because they're in that domain of music. But these other people outside of those spaces, they don't experience music being pitched to them all the time, right? In cars, they probably experience people who want car help, right? Those types of things or trying to or trying to get on that way. Like Sarah Blakely probably has all these people who want to get their clothing brands or woman-driven brands, that things that she sees all the time. She doesn't see mm -hmm. as much, even though her husband came from the music industry back in the day, right? All these people in these different niches. Like where it seems like you're you're competing in this one space, but you'll be surprised how many other places that you're actually refreshing. Yeah, to. the big one I need to mention is we haven't mentioned yet is esports. Hundred percent need to be putting some. Focus yeah, on that. yeah, but those are going they're going to integrate really fast. Yes, you need to, but those that's not the same as some of these other industries where it's just almost no music because it's already one integral because it's in in. A, Crown of a lot of people just playing and two Twi Twitch that opportunity well. is, Mixer. Yeah, yeah like well twitch uh, is almost synonymous with esports right yeah but exactly but you know getting, it, getting on pitching to actual you know influences on twitch playing in the background yeah. of, their show, of their of their you know videos like it's it's still an underutilized market i've been pitching mm. the artists to do so for for years um i've had a lot of artists that have had success doing it um whenever but i don't think there that'll be as much of a problem in like five years i think no. because of the gaming culture is so strong and a lot of those kids are going to also rap too they'll like it'll be natural for them to just yeah. try to do it yeah. in gaming in, in gaming videos that one is just so obvious 
in in how acting culture. Drake, like the fact that Drake did that already, people understand, you know, that how they can benefit from each other. So yes, definitely do that because it's still underutilized and it's still early just because of the difficulty and people, it's not just in front of people's faces. Mm -hmm. But think outside even, the box, as you say, yeah. But even yeah. more than that, yeah, go even further outside of the boxes yeah. um, than that where like that's probably people's third step. But think five and six where industries where people wouldn't even think to do anything at all. Oh, mm -hmm. Another example, there's a girl I know who did a remix. Well, she have, has an influencer friend who did a remix to this, this old New Orleans song. And they were able to get essentially a commercial deal um, doing some remixes for like a local car dealer, all right? And yep. that doesn't maybe sound sexy, but there's real money, right? Like now they're writing car commercials for and then doing remixes to bring that attention on um, that car place attention, all right? Driving videos. So that's a real, in Atlanta, that happens all the time, all right? There's, if you turn on the radio, certain channels, like one eight hundred four one one pain, good lord, they they have a new remix probably every two weeks, of using rap and all that stuff. You know, obviously targeting certain demographic. But there's so many opportunities to make money, um, and you know, sync in different ways that it's 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 crazy. Like if, we, if making money in music is different than hey, I want to be this particular artist and go this particular path the problem is everybody's trying to go down that particular path yeah be the, the vision of an artist that was sold to them when they were kids through mm -hmm. their favorite artists right they wanted to be like those people versus say saying i want to make money in music and there's so many ways to make money i found his name isn't it cash mace who the spanks yes it, cash yeah. mace. there you go Good Lord. yeah I yeah, I'll, I'll put a link to that video. It was, my computer as well. Yeah, yeah, I'll put a link to that video in the description. Hundred yeah. percent. Perfect. The, the other thing I was reading about in in the Netflix thing as well is that the European Commission have got this like legislation where Netflix have to ensure that at least thirty percent of the content you know comes from the actual country where it's being filmed in. So, for example, if there's, if there's, a, if there's a series being filmed in Denmark, at least thirty percent of the music's got to come from Danish artists, which is also quite helpful. And that, that's set to rise as well. So, interesting, interesting. What are your thoughts on that? I, I think it's a good thing because obviously, in, especially in, in more developing countries, in particular, or you know, or smaller music scene countries, where you know you've got you've got a much better chance of getting yourself some more for more opportunities. Like, I'm all for it. I think I think that quota will increase as well as there's more of it. Got gotcha. you. Oh well. Yeah. I mean, I want to put some more thought into that before I elaborate. And the other thing I was reading about in this article as well was um, the children's sector, children's entertainment, because it's set to be worth 1.7 billion by the end of next year. Spotify's got its own kids app as well. Mm. And then I think it's, yeah, so two thirds of three to four year olds watch content online and it goes to 90% by the time they're 15. You know, you just, there's no reason why you couldn't also, you know, write some music for children's shows if that's sort of your, if that's sort of your market. But don't be put off by it for certain, like. It's a growing industry it's all the time. Yeah. Yeah. It's an entire market for sure. And I like like kids are money these days. Right? Mm -hmm. I always say in some sense, you know, the, the industry oftentimes follows the money. And back in the day, right? CDs, albums, A tracks, whatever, they're these physical things that you have to have cash for. So in some sense, I want to make sure that I'm targeting somebody who can go out and pay and buy my physical product because that's the money exchange actually happens of course there's a scenario where the kids could like something and you convince parents to buy it for it but primarily adults have a a, a huge value mm -hmm. right because of that and then when you go to the future which is today like there you're it's a, it's a flip scenario where Money isn't, it's not just money directly. Time is now money, all right? Because it's about streaming. We're not exchanging money with fans directly oftentimes when it comes to our music. We're just, a lot, they're consuming and, and giving us their time. And that time is how we get paid out. So who has more time to listen again and again and again? It's the younger people, Yeah. All right? So that part right there is a hugely beneficial part of just that kid's market because oh man especially if, you, if a kid likes your stuff a 
kid, like we're not even talking about teenagers where you have a heck of a time in a middle school where you have a hell of a lot of time. When you talk about three and four years old, they yeah. will listen to one song repeatedly mm -hmm. day after day after day after month after month, you know? So that can really be meaningful. And I know Little Nas X saw quite a bit of that as well. You got me thinking about, and there's another interview you did with a TikToker. I don't know if it was, um, it might have been Jay, it might have been someone else, but he's a, te he's a teacher and he, you know, a lot of his kids, people saw him on TikTok and helped him blow him up. Imagine yeah, if he yeah, started yeah. writing songs, yeah, for the action, you know, if he started writing songs at that target market as well. It's a whole other avenue. It is. And that's, again, though, that's something that artists have to reconcile with, you know, with themselves because that's not often in line with that vision that artists but you can separate it sold on, yeah, right? yeah. you, you yeah. can yeah. you can but sometimes people can't compartmentalize it is yeah this is, this is the thing yeah. right yeah like, it's something that you can truly say is separate but it's, it's hard for that it could be your side it. hustle to get some more revenue you know you, you earn your money on that side then you you know it like, could be hey you're yeah. a songwriter i mean hey like because it you you can be a songwriter write songs for other people and then um you know sell it off just like so many artists are no one has to know it. but they're, yeah. they're also main artists yeah you can do it under a different voice you can do it under a different name you could have your own little group right and you might even hire some kids right mm -hmm. to sing and you might do them pay for hire exactly <laughs> that's yeah, yeah. That's, a, that's a real thing right there's so many ways to flip that you know i mean i might create me a little sweatshop to do the same one day <laughs> <laughs> So it's a great, you know, there's always opportunities to explore. That's like just a great time to try out these things. And a few more things for us to touch upon before we finish here. Uh, a few more news items. I'll do the quick one first, which is SoundCloud now allows artists to upload tracks straight via their iPhone. I'm going to have to go online and do it on desktop. So finally, you can just upload a track on your iPhone. But you can't do it on Android yet. Sorry, Sean, not yet. <laughs> I know you're a user of Android, but... Um, yeah. Yeah. Coming soon. That's all right, man. So you can now, so now you can upload your tracks and also change the artwork, do a track title, description, genre, everything, all on the app now for the first time. It's about time it's happened. Um, it's gonna, it's gonna have a lot of value still, I'm sure, but it should have been done about ten years ago. Yeah, I mean, I have no words like that. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's late. It, it's a simple thing. Loom, we know, does that right off the bat, pretty much, I believe. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's that's interesting. I'm, I, I wonder why now. Exactly. And the other thing to finish off with is, is YouTube testing a new way for sort of like, I guess it is a bit like tipping still. It's called applause. So on desktop, you can reward content creators by, you know, hitting the applause button. You can donate money to them. But there's a lot of catches with this early on in testing because you have to have more than 100,000 subscribers. And you also have to opt into it. You have to get invited to it as well. It's a closed beta. You have to get invited into it. Um, YouTube takes 30% of the donations, which is ridiculous. Um, so the average, so if someone gave you two dollars, you get about uh, one. Like you get, you get about one dollar forty. Yeah, take about 60, 60 cents of it. Um, and it's only been tested in a few markets right now. But I'm, I'm not, I'm not really, I'm struggling to see the value of this over Patreon or you know the super chats and things. I'm struggling to see whether this will, you know, be a big thing for YouTube or not. Yeah, I wonder if Patreon will find a lot of trouble in this i know from a philosophy standpoint they might go hey we love it we believe that artists should get their value creators should get mm. their value right i'm sure they'll say that on the front end but from an actual business model what would that do now there could be the positive on a increased education and message in the marketplace of fans paying people right and artists even getting used to asking asking for payment because at the end of the day these things are not subscriptions they're tipping their one off so then you would say hey the next step is to have a subscription so you have predictable yeah. revenue that's so that could help in the long run i don't i don't know we'll, we'll see i know i don't like the lack of control um, though. but, but they, when uh, you're in control you can set your tiers you can you know you you, you choose the content that goes out on there but if, if it's just giving you a little right. donation you don't they obviously take 30 percent and you don't you you don't know what's happening not but YouTube time. also has the um, what do you call that thing? I, don't know, I mean, they asked me to be in it. It's that uh, 
it's a program where you can basically subscribe to exclusive mm-hmm. content. They have that program as well. I don't, uh, I, yeah. but yeah, the tipping in general, it's us always going to have somebody take a cut. Right? I mean, there's going to be transaction yeah. fees at the very least. All right. That's going to always be a thing. And then of course, why would they not take, try to take a cut? You're not yeah, going to, exactly, I don't yeah. expect yeah. none of the, any of the companies not take some kind of cut from fees you know that's if anything the thing that's going to make it make sense for them all right i just think patrons got so much more value there because you're actually paying for something and getting something out of it whereas you know you're just obviously on youtube you're paying you're tipping them obviously because you want to but youtube are taking a cut anyway and you're not getting anything any more value from it other than you're just tipping them whereas on patreon you can do the same thing but also get some more exclusive content and engage even further with the creator Yes, it, but it's a broker though, right? I think we take technology for granted or technology spoils us because when we do things physically, right, there's all these brokers in the world, right? Where, mm-hmm. Whether it's selling things wholesale to get, or to get to a grocery store and all these things get upcharged, right? So there's a percentage that everybody's taking, but we don't always see it. So we don't think about it. Just like when the government taxes, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Taxes is like, hey, I'm just gonna put the taxes in the price and raise it, or I could just tax you, right? And we don't want to feel the tax. So there's that. There's always gonna be some sense of a middleman that's collecting something. And but when it's through technology, sometimes we just feel like, well, why don't they get everything? Because technology just feels so easy, but the technology has to be maintained. I mean, it is bit in business still. So I'm not you know, we can make the decisions on, I'm not, I don't feel anything against people taking a cut. And it's just us, to, like, especially when there's platform options. I know sometimes yep. options aren't real as they might seem because once you have a monopoly of attention, you can say, oh yeah, there's other options, but is there really kind of not, but it's kind of difficult when all the behavior in the market shares is grabbed. I, I understand that aspect of it, but that's yeah I'm, i don't know that's, that's kind of a part of the game is always take do it make as much as you can with as much as you have to give away right for until you can take as much as you can and give away as little as you can you know like, that's kind of the game has always been yeah I, exactly. I, I don't know if that means it's right but it's it's definitely not new <laughs> well again we'll have to wait and see how this materializes and develops over time we'll see where it rolls out to more and more users but it's, it's a very very exclusive club right now as you'd expect yeah but of course always i think that's a good place to close it out now this has been music news and matters episode five now um and I'll, I'll say we're now available on in podcast format on spotify apple music soundcloud wherever you get your podcasts make sure you check us out on there yes 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 sir and we'll always try to remind you because you guys need to get get our listeners up and to keep us doing it man we really hope you guys have been benefiting and starting to listen on spotify i haven't checked those stats in a period and of course we only do this every um once a month this is our second uh episode that'll officially be on it we hope mm-hmm. you enjoy thanks for listening thanks for listening everyone bye it's the network <laughs>